So I'm delighted to be joined by Mark Dooley, Music for Galway's Associate Artistic Director for 2020, the great year that it has been and continues to be. And we're going to talk a little bit about a very important part of the Music for Galway, Galway 2020 programme, which is called Soundscapes. And that element of the Soundscapes programme, Abend Musik, which was Mark's initial concept to celebrate 700 years of St. Nicholas Collegiate Church. So Mark, great to have you with us and maybe just give us a little bit of background into the concept of Abend Musik and where it came from. Sure, great to be with you. Um, I think our thinking was really that um, St Nicholas in Galway is, is such a, a wonderful church and the way it interacts with its cityscape. It's right in the middle of the city in the dead centre and it has the market around the walls. It's the sort of church that people walk past or even walk through, you know, in the course of their daily journeys. It's very much part of the cityscape. And we wanted to celebrate in that somewhere. And we looked to a, um, the German city of Lübeck, uh, which was one of the great Hanseatic cities in Northern Germany, um, which like Galway had a, has a history of very successful trading and wealthy merchants who wanted to um, endow their city uh, in various ways, whether it be in um, beautifying the church building or indeed um, sponsoring the music that was to happen in there in, in sort of concert format. So Lübeck had this wonderful oven music series, which was created in the 17th century, which was a, a sort of um, meeting of sacred and secular where the townspeople could enjoy music in the wonderful spaces of the, the big Marienkirche right in the middle of the city out of the context of an actual service. So we, the idea really is that Galway, um, because it has that same relationship with the city right in the middle of the market, that we could do something for Galway along the same lines. So that's really where it comes from, the idea of uh, that, that sort of 16th, 17th century successful merchant city um, celebrating this wonderful mix of sacred and secular, the sort of grey area where these two worlds meet. Mm. And the idea then is to have concerts on Sundays at five o'clock in the afternoon for around an hour to an hour and a quarter. So it's a lovely time for a concert, I think. It is. It's the sort of time when people tend to be kicking their heels. Um, you know, they're obviously not at work most, well, these days. <laughs> Who knows what they could be doing? But um, yeah, it's it's a time that has proved popular already for certain things, for services that we've done at that time. And uh, for instance, the Good Friday concert that we've been doing as part of the Music of Galway program for the last few years now is on Good Friday at five o'clock as well. And that sort of early evening time before people settle into the, to the cocktail hour, I think is a, is a nice time to do something. So how did you set about making the various programmes for the, for the concerts? Well, our inspiration there was the, the Galway 2020 programme itself and the great, the great themes of, of landscape and of migration, the idea of journeying of this movement that seems to sort of run through so much of the Galway 2020 programming so that we would make musical journeys and not just musical, but spiritual or if you like metaphysical journeys in each programme that we would go from one point to another, whether it's from darkness to light or even light into darkness as one of the programs does or from despair to hope that there were these journeys that we could make in musical terms so yes this idea of journeying a journey of the spirit if you like which is indeed the title um, of our first program that's really the sort of the thought behind it so let's talk a little bit more then about the first program which will take place on sunday week on the 25th of october uh, at five o'clock and which will be live streamed on Music for Galway's website in the absence of a live audience and for the times we live in. Um, and we're going to be joined by the Hungarian baritone Jula Nagy, uh, myself on the piano, but also we're going to have a lovely choral element to, to the concert, as, as, as all the concerts will have a choral element, I understand, and we'll be joined by Resergam. So maybe talk a little bit more about, about the programme and the concept behind that. Sure. Yeah, there, there's a choral element in all of the programmes. I think the idea being that each programme has a sort of, well, this one in particular, a sort of two-track approach, so that in this programme, um, which is called Journey of the Spirit, and it's about a, a, a movement of the, of the spirit from despair to, to a new world, if you like, in this case, transcendent love. That movement, first of all, with, with leader, uh, largely from the 19th century, and then a sort of twin track running alongside it where there are these choral commentaries on that as well, which take a more, obviously a more sacred tone because they're using works on sacred texts. And the central work in the middle, which sort of glues all of that together are the Brahms Four Serious Songs, which use biblical texts, but very much uh, a more sort of 
subjective feel to, to, to the way that Brahms works here. So they're very much in the style of Lieder, but they, they are actually religious texts. And the fourth one, the famous passage from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians about love. Most people will know it from going to weddings, I suppose, where love is not this, not that, not the other thing, but indeed um, this idea of love being uh, one of the three great virtues. And the wonderful text um, about seeing through a glass darkly, that you don't see straight away, you can't see through the glass clearly, but then you can see um, clarity comes after that, if you like. So, which is a rather complicated way of saying that we have these two tracks, if you like, running through the program. Um, mm, yeah, I think it's lovely cool. to have the baritone and, and, and piano answered, if you like, by the choir and then back to the baritone and piano. I think it makes a lovely a lovely opportunity for conversation in a way and for commentary on one, one on the other. Um, and this idea of going from, from one group of songs which which seek to evoke despair and and difficulty, which of course many of us have felt over the last few months, into some sort of new maybe acceptance or as you say transcendent love, which is which is then evoked in this in the last group of songs, I think will be hopefully a, a, a yeah. journey for everybody who watches. Um, there's also a contemporary the in, the, in the program. Oh, there is, Finney, that's right. Yes, we're, um, well, quite a new departure. And we're going to really <laughs> fly on the seat of our trousers at one moment. We're going to do a choral improvisation um, after the fourth Brahms song, which sets that text of St. Paul, which I was talking about. We're just taking that phrase through a glass darkly and then seeing face to face. Um, and we're going to um, do a choral improvisation on that text. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how that works. It's the first time I've ever done this. Um, though I know some choirs have dabbled with it in the past, but well, we will workshop a few ideas in rehearsal. And then when it comes to the performance, we're really just going to see what happens, uh, live dangerously and see what comes out of the other end. Mm -hmm. It's such a good text for that because it, it is quite a, it's a text redolent with images. So it's going to be interesting to see how the singers respond to that, I think. And how much preparation will you do with them on the improvisation and how much will be sort of all, see, dependent on how they all feel on the day in the concert? I think a bit of both. We'll, we're meeting on the Friday, so we've got three days together. So we'll weave in a few sort of workshops during that time just to explore some ideas and very much get a sort of collective response going. I think basically the way we're going to approach it is responding to ideas so that one singer might throw out an idea and then the others will respond in some way, whether it might be in a chordal way or building a chordal progression around a fixed theme that might be given. Um, there are all sorts of things to explore here. Um, and then, yes, leave something to the to, to the day itself. Yeah, and see, see what happens. Yeah, we're also going to have a bit, of, a little bit of Bach, I think. Uh, Com Jesu Com. Com Jesu Com. Yes, one of the um, double choir motets that that Bach wrote. This is a a wonderful one, which again traces this journey um, from despair um, and longing to um, uh, a sense that yes all is well when one, when one resides in the love of Christ. So it's it's making that little journey as well. Mm, mm. Um, and we're going to be doing that with qu quite a small group, just eight voices. So that's a voice per part divided into two choirs of four voices and with chamber organ as well. Wonderful. So there's be some beautiful songs yeah. well in the program. There's gorgeous um, Verborg and Hyde by, by Hugo Wolf and Ich bin der Welt abhanden gekommen um, from Mahler and um, I think we're going to do Prometheus by Schubert as well so there's some very very um, rich texts I think which have been set by these leader composers and, and um, yeah it's absolutely it's a nice range of style as well because we've got Weber in there as well so you know a nod yeah. to the to the 20th century tradition and everything that he represents so there is really something for this program stylistically I think there is from shoots in the century right up to Weber. It's, it's a wonderful mix. Well, what I love about the program is that everything is is very thought through and has a reason for being in the program. It's not just, you know, a song recital with a few yes. choral commentaries thrown in. Everything is in very much there for a very good reason. It's going in this journey together. And, you know, the fact that you've selected this line from the Brahms or from the scripture through Brahms to mm -hmm. improvise on, on in the 20th first century, uh, you know, I think really shows that there's a real thread of of thought going through the the entire program so i think um i mean i would say this because i'm biased but i do think it's a very um strong program and um i do hope people will will um will tune in to watch this as i say it's going to be streamed live there'll be no audience 
It'll be streamed live from the wonderful space of St. Nicholas Collegiate Church in the middle of Galway on Sunday, the 25th of October at five o'clock, live on musicforgalway.ie on demand. And uh, the Jula and myself, baritone and piano, will be at one end of the church, as far as I understand, and the choir will be in the other main section of the church. And, and um, uh, yeah, well, it'll be like a wonderful sort of commentary between the, be, between the two of us. And um, yes. I think... There will be a journeying one, between the spaces. Well, exactly. Be, and I think it's a, uh, it's a really wonderful way to celebrate um, the 700 years of this amazing building to, by, by streaming it you know, from there. And um, yeah. it'll be very, very evocative, I think, and, 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 and special. So I'm look, certainly look, looking forward to it. And I've been really enjoying preparing the song accompaniments, uh, which I say, which, as I say, are so rich and evocative. And um, I think it'll be a, a really, really interesting um, concert. So thank you for Yes, I think so as well. I think I'm looking forward to is the, um, all the things that you've mentioned, Finning, but also the contrast between intimacy and something rather less defined. I mean, you, you and Julia will be in the, in the transept there, which is quite an intimate acoustic. Mm. Church is a combination of acoustics. It's really six yeah. or seven different spaces. And then the choir, as you say, is going to be out in the main part of the church in the nave. And there's going to be this wonderful dialogue between these two spaces, which have very different feelings. So it's not the sort of thing one could ever do in a normal concert, because obviously we're fairly yeah. static. The audience is in one place, so yes. the performers. But serendipitously, this um, wretched pandemic has <laughs> opened up these opportunities to use the buildings in different ways. So, Indeed. Yeah, it should Indeed. be very interesting. Mm. So it just remains for me to thank you, Mark. And I want to thank also everybody watching, all the Music for Galway supporters for their forbearance and patience throughout this awful summer. Um, Music for Galway's last concert was in January when we had our very successful Midwinter Festival at the Town Hall Theatre celebrating early Beethoven. And um, tonight, of course, um, we're hearing late Beethoven uh, with John O'Connor at the Hardyman. And um, it's it's good that we've been able to make that journey from, from early Beethoven to through to late Beethoven. Um, in this 250th year uh, of his birth. And so um, we, we do thank everybody for, for, for supporting us. Stay with us um, as we bring so much content online. And uh, we do hope and we do know and we do trust that we will all make the journey through this terrible time and back to, to live concerts just as soon as is possible. So um, many thanks to Mark for joining me. And Thank you. we look forward now to hearing some more live music, I think, this evening here in Galway.